You're watching RT live from Moscow. Our top story this hour. NATO has agreed to take command of the Libyan no-fly zone, but stopped short of accepting full military control. Alliance chief Anders Fock Rasmussen said the U.S. will hand over operational responsibility to NATO within days. Meanwhile, fresh airstrikes are being reported in the Libyan capital, Tripoli. Our correspondent Paul Lear is there for us and now joins us live. Paul, the, the coalition operation has been going on for almost a week now. What have the consequences has been so far for Libya. Well, if we look specifically at the question of how many civilians have been killed and injured, we're certainly hearing from coalition partners that they are not targeting civilians. But here on the ground, a very different story being painted. State television and indeed the Libyan government says more than 100 civilians have so far been killed. Now, I did attend a mass funeral for more than 30 people. The graves were laid out. The coffins were laid out. The mood there, though, was essentially one of anger. There were easily three, four, five hundred people, and they were shouting names Sarkozy, Obama, for the international community to stay out of internal Libyan affairs. So the mood there, a lot more angry than that of a funeral procession. A different group of journalists were taken to a local hospital here in Tripoli, and there they filmed more than a dozen charred bodies. Now, they were told that these were civilians, but it's always very difficult to determine who are the burnt bodies and, indeed, who were the bodies in those coffins. A government spokesperson has said that among those bodies, no doubt, there are five but if you listen to the words of the sheikh talking at that funeral procession, he said that all Libyans are fighters. So again, begging the question in terms of the difference between civilians and fighters. We are also hearing rumors that bodies are being brought in from other fighting centers such as Azawir and that they're being presented here as casualties, as civilian casualties of these airstrikes. Paul, well, NATO has agreed to take the lead in the no-fly zone over Libya. Is that likely to change the course of the military operation? What are you hearing on the ground there? Well, the first question that people are asking is what effect have these airstrikes, which have been going on for nearly a week, actually had on the ground? Now, throughout this week, there has been intensive fighting in the town of Misrata, which is the last rebel-held town in the west of this country. And only today we're hearing the first reports that fighting there has subdued somewhat between rebel and government forces, and that for the first time people are actually able to leave their homes. But we're still hearing very worrying reports that the hospital remains under fire, that snipers are positioned there, preventing people from entering and leaving. And then if you look at the other towns like Ajdabir, which is the next main town after Benghazi, their rebel fighters have been unable to advance for more than a week. They are now literally waiting this fight out on the perimeter and hoping that Gaddafi's forces will run out of supplies and at that stage they'll be able to actually make a difference. So the word from rebels on the ground is that they want more airstrikes. They're actually calling for more weapons and I think among them there's even the hope that there could be ground forces eventually sent in. And again, people are revisiting that UN resolution that talks about all necessary measures to bring the fighting on the ground to an end. The worrying questions, though, are that if the international community needs to get further involved in terms of the fight on the ground at the moment, it's happening in urban areas. So that does run the risk of there being more casualties. The other worrying factor, of course, is also the fact that despite these airstrikes, there's been no political or military weakening in Gaddafi's position. And despite the fact that we've heard that his air capability has been taken out, just yesterday, there was a Libyan plane that was trying to take off or trying to land. We're not in exactly clear on the details, but it certainly was shot down by a French plane, and that was in breach of the no-fly zone. People here say it doesn't really matter in terms of who commands the no-fly operation, but certainly the rebels understand that if you're looking at a much broader coalition than just American and Canadian planes taking charge, you do run the risk of this operation being vetoed, which is in essence what happened happened with Turkey in terms of why NATO still needs to decide for a few more days whether or not it's going to take control of the full operation. Here in Tripoli, the mood is incredibly tense. Overnight, there were airstrikes in the east and the west of the city. We are now focused on midday Friday prayers. We've been told that security in the center of the town is incredibly tense in preparation for some kind of demonstrations, and the city is running out of fuel. And we've been told that in the next few days, there could simply be no gas in any of the petrol stations here. All right. Well, you, of course, will continue to track the situation in the Libyan capital. For, for now, Paulus Lear, live from Tripoli.
Now, the U.N. says it's extremely concerned over the humanitarian situation and human rights violations in Libya. However, not enough aid has been provided to those in need, with U.N. officials saying that food supply lines have been disrupted. Official figures suggest over 300,000 people have already fled Libya, as Artesia Gorpiskinov reports. People are fleeing the country. Uh, we saw scores of refugees coming out of Libya, and according to the United Nations, uh, over 300,000 people have already fr fled the country. It's thought that nearly 10,000 refugees are currently at uh, Libya's borders with Egypt and Tunisia, and uh, dozens of more are expected to join them. So this kind of gives a picture on the humanitarian situation in the country. We spoke with one family. They were from Benghazi. They described the situation there as terrible. They said it was absolutely impossible for them to live there anymore. So they decided to wait it out in Egypt, uh, see what's happening, and maybe come back if uh, things settle down. They also told us that some of the pro-Gaddafi supporters who were uh, acting undercover inside Benghazi were uh, captured by the opposition. So in that sense, there's still activity going on inside Benghazi itself. Just on Thursday, the United Nations met to discuss the humanitarian situation in the country, uh, strongly criticizing what's, uh, what's happening there. And actually, judging by these figures, over 300,000 people already left uh, Libya. It's a real humanitarian crisis. And so, so far, the main goal of this military operation to reinforce the no-fly zone, which was to help ordinary Libyans, that still has not been achieved.